Hey y'all, Nicholas DeMario here of SterlingKisses.com, and today I think I'll get away from the bench and try my hand at some forging. I came across something called a split cross, and it seemed like a neat project. There's some great tutorials out there on how to make one of these, but you're more than welcome to watch me fumble around the forge on this one. I'm using a very old railroad spike, which should add some interesting texture to the final piece. I start by cutting about an inch and a half worth of material off the spike to work with. A bandsaw would do a better job, but sometimes you have to work with what you've got. And I've got an angle grinder. Next, I mark a line that goes a little more than halfway down the center of the piece. I do this on the other side as well. This is the start of where the split cross gets its name from. I cut a little more than halfway down the piece on one side, and a little more than halfway on the other, so the cuts meet in the middle. Here's a better look at the cuts. Now this isn't the typical way of doing it. If I were to split this open now, it would create more of an X shape instead of a cross. But we're just going to go with it and see what we've got. The metal is heated and it's placed over this old axe head. And I just wedge open those cuts. Here I am dropping it straight out of the forge. I don't have a proper set of tongs, and even if I did, it's a pretty small piece to hold. I'll be honest, this was all a very clumsy process. Finally, I started to make some headway, and sometimes it even looked like I knew what I was doing. I started to wedge open the cut on the other side, and the arms of the cross unfold. The cross finally starts to take shape as it's now opened up. I also managed to find a nice set of tongs that helped immensely when it came to finalizing the shape of the cross. Sometimes it's all about using the right tools for the job. Here's a shot of my setup. That's an old grill I converted into a forge. And yes, I was a little concerned about all the dry leaves lying around. There's a hose and bucket of water off camera, but you'll just have to take my word for it. Here I'm just doing a little more refining with a smaller hammer. And honestly, the results are pretty rough. It doesn't look like I spent hours on this at all. So let's bring it back to the bench and see what we can do about it. I wasn't happy with the split part of the cross, so I took a jeweler saw to it. Then I trimmed it up with a cutoff disc, just to define the profile a bit more. And I gave it an overall sanding down and beveled the edges on it a bit. Flipping a handheld belt sander upside down and locking it in a vise is a perfectly safe way of doing this. I then gave it a little bit of polish, not too much because I like the old, worn kind of look that it has. Finally, I gave it a spray of clear coat and tied a leather cord to it. The end results are actually pretty decent. It's definitely a unique cross, and I learned a lot by making it. We all have to start somewhere, and I'd say this was a pretty good first try. 
I doubt this will be the last time we see the Forge and Anvil on this channel. I'm Nicholas DiMario of SterlingKisses.com. Thanks for watching.